So what is with the Russian snipers and the bayonets? What is this uh, crazy obsession with the bayonets for the sniper rifles? Starting with uh, the Mosin 9130 type uh, going through the SVT-40 all the way to the SVD, we do have ability to put the bayonet on the Russian sniper rifle. So how much truth is it about Russian snipers using the bayonets? Let's see what we got in the cooking for you guys. Follow me. A case of a Mosin rifles needed to be zeroed with a bayonet was slightly touched by Otayas in his outstanding video about the history of the Mosin at the CNR channel. I highly recommend watch that video. Link is in the video description. I did talk about the use of the bayonets by snipers briefly in my Mosin snipers video, but I want to expand today more uh, on that. We do know that uh, some of the Russian snipers actually were sporting out uh, bayonets on their rifles. Now, to be perfectly clear, the Russian manual of arms for the sniper rifles clearly stated that the sniper rifle had to be zeroed without the bayonet. Why? Of course, because it will cause the shift in the point of impact when you're running the rifle with bayonet and without it. Now, as we know, that did not stop Russian snipers for various reasons, which I will touch on it a little bit later, from uh, using the bayonets on their sniper rifles. What is most amazing to me, that affection to the bayonet was extended to the SVT-40 and, of course, later on to the SVD. SVD had the bayonet lock uh, as well. So let me go to shooting right now. First, I will shoot that Mosin PU sniper without the bayonet. Then I'm going to shoot with the bayonet and we'll compare, we'll see the data. How is that looking like on target from 100 yards? And then I'm going to shift uh, to the SVD clone and I'm going to put the bayonet and we'll repeat the process and discuss the results. So without delaying, let me chamber the route and I'm running standard 148 grain full metal jacket Red Army standard ammo. All right, let me see if I can work that target. I'll be aiming on the triangle tip. All right, dead on. We are dead on the triangle tip. Now I'm going to attach the bayonet. An interesting fact, this bayonet, that's a Hungarian-made bayonet, but it actually came with my PU Hungarian-made sniper and it's serialized uh, for it too. So some interesting uh, factor that was not only the Russians who were <laughs> putting those bayonets with uh, their sniper rifles. Uh, but the Hungarians, communists, Hungarians as well. All right, bayonet is attached. I'm going to use the same aim point on target now. I want to have a good position so I'm not inducing any error. And boom, and there is a shift. You guys are already seeing that shift. I'll go take a pictures, measure it, and then we're going to switch to the SVD clone. Target is uh, clean up, reset. We are ready for the SVD clone and the M86. Exactly the same ammo. 148 grain full metal jacket from the Red RV standard. So that pretty much simulates uh, greatly what uh, the guys had access to uh, during the beginnings of the SVD. And also that was the pretty much standard round type uh, for the Mosin. So let's see how the SVD uh, does with uh, the bayonet. First, of course, without the bayonet, round should be in the chamber. All right, we are dead on the tip of the triangle. 
let me attach the bayonet. There we go, push the button and attach the bayonet securely. There you go, took me a moment, sloppy hands, but that's okay, let me go back behind the rifle. So now let's repeat the process with the bayonet attached. Same point of aim. And boom, and I can see the shift. Uh, you guys are seeing on the camera as well. Let's wrap our heads around it. This uh, right now. So I'll go and measure the distance. What was the shift like? And we'll discuss it uh, down there at the target. So results are in. We'll discuss them in a second. I just want to point out to you that uh, the snipers, uh, Russian snipers like uh, Maxim Alexandrovich Passar, 237 kills, uh, was sporting a bayonet on his uh, sniper rifle often. We also know that the pictures do exist of uh, the sniper rifles uh, with uh, the bayonet equipped when uh, used by the other soldiers. And you cannot question that uh, today. We know for sure that the bayonets were used on some of the snipers by the snipers. It was a uh, in the past, it was kind of seen as an urban legend and uh, not much information was known. But uh, thanks in a big part to Alex uh, from his outstanding blog, mn9130.info, he actually dig out the documents uh, from the factories, factory documents, which are stating clearly that the PU snipers were shipped to the front with the bayonets uh, in the boxes. Now, how they were used, of course, it was following to the individual soldier and what they were doing with them. Uh, but we know uh, from those documents that the bayonets were actually issued to the snipers. Maybe not issued, but when the PU sniper was coming out, uh, or, or PM sniper was coming out from the factory, uh, most likely they had the bayonets uh, for them. Now, uh, let's, let's go to the results, because that's kind of interesting. On the Mosin PU sniper, what we had, we shifted, after attaching the bayonet, we shifted uh, from our point of aim, the point of impact shifted six inches down and six inches left. So that's a lot. That's at 100 yards. If you will go to the 300 yards, we remember, uh, within the 300 meters, which will be at 330 yards roughly, that was the most common distance uh, of kills during the World War II for the snipers. So within the 330 yards, um, this is what we're looking like. That shift would be around 18 inches. So 18 inches down and 18 inches uh, left because you have to multiply this uh, by three when going to the 300 yards. Um, I will talk about it in a second, go back to the Mosin. Let me switch to the SVD. SVD, interestingly enough, switch right and up. And the results were a little bit better. It was a little bit tighter. So it went up by around five inches and right five uh, inches. And this is repeatable. More or less, it's repeatable. Their differences are within the one inch. And that mainly comes because sometimes those bayonets shake or whatever, so they may impact the barrel uh, differently. But the key word is the results are repeatable. So what it means for the sniper, thanks to the scopes, even on the PU or Mosin or sniper, or the PEM or PE scopes, they both uh, had adjustments with the turrets for the elevation and then, of course, for the windage. So if you knew how much you're shifting, what I would do when creating the dope, it's like attaching the suppressor. You, if, if this is a repeatable event, you can mark the turrets or put in your notes that, hey, on the windage, I have to switch X amount. They didn't have a clicks, but they had the marks. And you could be very, very accurate with uh, the dope card. So you may have a dope card for running the rifle with the bayonet, like in this case, 
or for the rifle running without the bayonet. And it would work because those scopes offer repeatable settings for windage adjustment and elevation adjustment. This is why having that flexible toolet-like windage adjustment on the scope pays off, guys. Now, the case is even easier with uh, the little bit modern scopes uh, like PSO, uh, one scopes and things like this because they had a better mechanism, better toolets uh, versus the PU, right? Uh, so that's not even a question that creating a very accurate dope card for SVD would be uh, easy like that. Now, why would the sniper run a bayonet on the sniper rifle? Fantastic question. I cannot honestly imagine sneaking on the positions with the bayonet attached. Why? Because this is without the bayonet, the most MPU sniper or even SVD, they are already extremely wrong rifles, right? So maneuvering through the bushes and everything, this is not a really friendly rifle for that type of the movement already by attaching the bayonet. And as you can see, my goodness, that poker is long, right? that adds another length uh, to the rifle. So what I think uh, was the bayonets were attached, not all the time, but when they were on the mission, and I read this uh, in the journals or uh, in memoirs of uh, some of the snipers, Russian snipers, they were often taken and they were participating uh, on the missions with the scouts. And their goal for that type of the mission with the scouts often was to capture the enemy, snatch the enemy from uh, the, their trenches line or bunkers or whatever because they needed intelligence. They needed to interrogate the, the, the prisoner, right? So the snipers were often participating in those missions. Well, the problem is very often those missions were ending up in a, some sort of the close quarter combat. And uh, with having the rifle a single shot if you are really close to someone, then, you know, bayonet was used to poke some guys uh, to death. Now, that's the explanation I'm getting for the use of those bayonets and uh, why those guys were, some of those uh, Russian snipers were rolling with the bayonets uh, attached on their rifles. Now, if you go back to the SVD, and we know that the SVD role changed a little bit. Yes, it was the sniper, Sniperskaya Vitovka Dragunova when the Dragunov was uh, designing the rifle, so sniper rifle Dragunova, uh, basically. But the way how the Russians started incorporating later on the snipers was with the heavy support and accent uh, in maybe seen today as a squad designated marksman. And very often this guy as a part of the standard uh, line unit group or, or squad, he would be participating uh, in, of course, the raids and, uh, you know, maybe some crazy uh, bayonet charges if we're talking about the close quarter uh, combat environments. Or going back to the scout missions, and uh, capturing, uh, you know, the, the inte life intelligence and things uh, like uh, this. Uh, I tried to find the pictures from Afghanistan uh, with uh, the SVDs and the bayonets attached. There's not that many pictures to begin with, uh, and I couldn't, I couldn't find anything. Uh, but it would be interesting if uh, someone has a, any pictures of uh, Russian soldiers uh, running the bayonets on the SVD rifles from Afghanistan, I'll be very interested. Uh, please email me some, okay, if you can. But this is it. This is, a, it's a very interesting topic. As I said at the beginning, it was seen as a more of, you know, like those crazy legends from the World War II. Uh, but uh, as we know now, the evidence uh, from the documents actually, uh, and again, the kudos to Alex for digging this out, uh, supports what we are seeing on the pictures, uh, basically, right? That uh, those uh, sniper rifles and the Russian snipers from time to time were actually running the bayonets or their sniper rifles. So it's not a myth, it's a fact. 
And uh, we have demonstrated what is happening when you are touching the bayonet, but also because of abilities of those scopes, you can compensate for it and have a very accurate dope cards uh, if you have to. So that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for being with the Vintage Rifles uh, Shooters Club. Please subscribe, guys. Let's make this uh, channel big. <laughs> I cannot accomplish this without your help and without your subscription. To the next video. Bye.